Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Despite being introduced in the mid-1950s at the height of the Cold War, the Boeing B-52 Straddle Fortress remains in service to this day as one of the most recognizable long-range bombers in aviation history. That said, its role has changed quite a bit over the years with the 159-foot-long, 185-foot wingspan aircraft undergoing many updates and modifications. One of the most impressive of these is the addition of the Common Strategic Rotary Launcher, or CSRL. The CSRL is essentially a giant rotary missile storage unit that is installed into the B-52's bomb bay. The bay measures an impressive 1,043 cubic feet and was originally designed to carry around 70,000 pounds of bombs. Acting almost like the cylinder of a handgun, the CSRL can be rotated freely, allowing the pilot or gunner of the B-52 to select from a range of different missiles and bombs, depending on the given situation. The CSRL unit is preloaded with ordnance and then brought out to the waiting B-52, which has been fitted with a special internal system that can hold rotate, and deploy the CSRL. The CSRLs themselves are extremely complex devices, and they must undergo hours of preparation by trained technicians before being loaded with munitions. At times, Maintenance squadrons in the U.S. military will be asked to practice loading the CSRL into a waiting B-52. This exercise aims to further familiarize the team with how the equipment works while proving to the senior officers that they can perform under pressure. In the event of an emergency, it would be imperative for the B-52 to get loaded and airborne in as little time as possible. Therefore, this type of practice is essential to the team's overall combat readiness. A fully loaded CSRL typically weighs tens of thousands of pounds, which necessitates special remote load lifters to move and install. Even so, the entire process requires the work and supervision of multiple ground crew. It's hard to overstate just how formidable a CSRL equipped B-52 is. At the touch of a button, the bomber can switch from conventional heavy bombs to laser-guided missiles, to GPS-driven cruise missiles, and more. This allows the B-52 crew to attack a wealth of different targets all over a given area in just a few minutes. Combined with its long-range and mid-air refueling capabilities, the addition of the CRL turns one of the oldest aircraft in the United States fleet into a true modern flying fortress. The Air Force has long relied on bombs to strike targets from the air, 
But the invention of rocket and jet-powered missiles changed the face of warfare forever. Suddenly, aircraft and land-based batteries could attack targets at extreme distances with increased accuracy. Furthermore, planes and helicopters now had another option to engage other aircraft, where they previously only had machine guns. Missiles first entered the world of aerial combat in the 1950s. That's when AIM-4 Falcon, AIM-7 Sparrow, and AIM-9 Sidewinder became fairly standard aboard U.S. military planes. These sophisticated weapons differed from rockets because they utilized guidance systems, which allowed them to follow moving targets such as enemy planes. These guidance systems vary, with some focusing on radar tracking to hit their targets, while others, particularly the Sidewinder, track the enemy aircraft's heat source. Missiles are typically loaded onto pylons located on the aircraft's wings, typically referred to as hardpoints. These are electronically controlled. Once a missile is armed and a target has been acquired, it will be released from its hardpoint and immediately begin homing in on the target. One of the main issues with switching from guns to missiles is that missiles come with a much higher price tag than traditional ammunition. The average AIM-9 missile, for instance, costs between $200,000 and $400,000. This makes live fire exercises crucial to minimizing expenses and ensuring that as many missiles as possible hit their targets. Live fire exercises can vary. Sometimes, pilots will target aerial drones or even fully converted remote control aircraft. Other times, they will merely lock their weapons onto the target and mimic firing an actual missile. In reality, Sidewinders and other popular missiles like the AIM-7 Sparrow are extremely sensitive tools boasting sophisticated technology. They can boast ranges of anywhere between 20 and 50 miles and reach speeds of over Mach 2.5 to ensure their targets can't easily outrun them. Though smaller tactical fighter jets typically carry missiles and conventional bombs, the U.S. military has expressed interest in recent years as to whether or not an aircraft like the F-15 Eagle could successfully deploy a nuclear weapon. This resulted in several tests featuring the B-61 nuclear bomb. These variable yield bombs vary widely in their destructive ability and are only about the size of a standard missile. During the test, an inert B-61 was fixed onto the center hardpoint of an F-15E, which successfully carried and deployed the weapon as required. Planes are not the only military aircraft capable of making great use of missiles. In fact, due to their ability to hover and move laterally, attack helicopters like the Boeing AH-64 Apache have proven themselves excellent platforms for missile and rocket deployment. The Apache is a particularly heavily armed aircraft capable of carrying various AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, air-to-air -air Stinger missiles, and AGM-65 Mavericks, 
designed for close air support and are particularly effective against ground targets. This is in addition to heavy-duty rocket pods and an M230 30mm chain gun which is located under the Apache's nose. As with many other helicopters of this type, the real mission of the AH-64 Apache is to support ground troops. This is why the helicopters boast such a short range and why Boeing prioritized weapons over other features. Typically, an Apache squadron will work closely with troops in the area, protecting them from aircraft, armored vehicles, machine gun nests, and heavy weapons. The unique dual cockpit design provides both the pilot and the gunner with nearly a 360-degree view of the battlefield. This helps maximize their effectiveness. Though AH-64s are primarily land-based aircraft, navies all around the world have long since embraced helicopters for a wide variety of tasks. Because they can take off and land vertically, helicopters are the perfect solution for moving troops to and from the ship quickly and efficiently. They can also be assigned to ships other than aircraft carriers, including amphibious assault ships, cruisers, and destroyers. Aside from missiles, these seafaring helicopters have also been equipped with torpedoes, which they can drop onto unsuspecting enemy ships. Of course, these heavily armed naval vessels don't solely rely on helicopters to engage the enemy. Most ships in the U.S. Navy are heavily armed with various missiles, cannons, and torpedoes. These include the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow, a 12-foot-long surface-to-air homing missile capable of traveling at roughly 2,600 miles per hour. However, its primary job is not to attack, but defend. Specifically, the Sea Sparrow is intended to intercept and destroy incoming enemy missiles or drone aircraft. The missile is stored in a series of deck-mounted batteries. Once fired, it uses sophisticated radar technology to track and engage its target. When directly engaging enemy vessels, the most effective weapon is a torpedo. This is essentially a missile designed to travel through the water. They are often deployed aboard submarines, destroyers, and other Navy ships. Because they do not need to move through the air, torpedoes can be much heavier and pack far more explosive power than missiles. However, they typically rely on traditional propellers for propulsion, flywheels, and compressed air, so they also cannot move as fast. For example, the most common torpedo in the U.S. Navy is the Mark 48, which weighs 3,500 pounds, is 19 feet long, and costs around $5 million. Its maximum speed is estimated to be just 63 miles per hour.
though they differ in many ways. Using a combination of both missiles and torpedoes allows ships to do incredible damage to enemy vessels. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.